Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Good morning. It's good to see you all here this morning. Those of you who are here in the nave, those of you who have joined us online, we're so glad you're here. Um, we pray that this day is a blessing for you as you enter into the new week. Um, one thing I would like to mention, the beginning of the psalm this morning, the verse reads, Happy are they who fear the Lord. And some people kind of are taken aback by that word, fearing God. And I wanted to let you know, if you don't know this, that the Hebrew word for fear also is translated awe and respect. And in most contexts, when they're talking about God, it isn't about being afraid of God, but being in God's presence and having a state of awe and wonder. And I pray that this day, as we gather for word and sacrament, that you encounter the awe of God's presence and the wonder of what God has to offer us this day. So again, welcome. As you are able, 
please kneel for a moment of silent prayer. Please rise. be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Set God from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. From the book Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast but do not see? Why humble ourselves but do not notice? Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today, you do not make your voice heard on high. It is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble yourselves, oneself. Is it to bow down the head like a brush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly your vindicator shall go before you the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, then point of the finger, the speaking of evil. If you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide your continuously 
and satisfied your needs in purchased places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden like a spring of water whose waters never fall your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt you shall rise up the foundations of many generations you shall be called the repairer of the beach the restorer of the streets to live in the word of the lord thanks be to god Psalm 112, verses 1 through 9. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, I did not come proclaiming the mystery of God to you in lofty words or, in ris- or wisdom. For I decided to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and, cruci- and him crucified. And I came to you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. My speech and my proclamation were not what plausible words of wisdom but with a demonstration of the Spirit and of power, so that your faith might rest not on the human wisdom, but on the power of God. Yet among the mature, we speak wisdom, though it is not wisdom of this age or the rulers of this age who are doomed to perish. But we speak God's wisdom, secret and hidden, which God decreed for the ages for our glory none of the rulers of this age understood this for if they had they would not have crucified the Lord of glory but as it is written what no eye has seen no ear heard nor the human heart conceived what God has prepared for those who love him these things God has revealed to us through the Spirit for the Spirit searches everything even the depths of God. For what human beings know, what is truly human, except the spirit that is in with them. So also, no one comprehends what is truly God's, except the spirit of God. Now we have received, not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God. So that many, 
so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I tell you, <clears throat> Heaven and earth pass away. Not one letter, not one stroke of a letter, will pass from the law until all is accomplished. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does them and teaches them will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you, Unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> I, one of the things that I love most about Christmas Eve services 
are the two, I love the children's no rehearsal pageant, don't, don't, but the two others, the candlelight masses, where at the end of the service, the congregation holds their individual candles and they're all lit and it's dark in here and we sing Silent Night. And what an experience, what a feeling that is. What we see here that you may not get to see is because you're, you're behind somebody, you're not looking at the candles, but the back of their heads, is looking out here and seeing in the darkness all of the candles, all the individual candles being held. And by that illumination, their own face is seen. But what also is so wonderful is the fact that it lights up the whole room and not just the individual. That while that candle is their candle and lights for them, together it lights the entire room. Revealing not only those who have candles, but for those who may not have them. I think there's a metaphor there about faith, about community, about those who travel the journey of faith. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Coming from Isaiah that talks about being light. But here the word isn't you singular as in each one of you is the light of the world. Here the passage, the you is plural. You, you know, y'all. Y'all together are the light of the world. Together our lights, our faith individually come together and form something greater. Form a purpose. You are the salt of the earth. Now there's lots of interpretations. And different preachers will be preaching on different aspects of the idea, the metaphor, the symbol of salt. The seasoning. The idea of it being a preservative. Or how it purifies. It's used at the altar for sacrifices. Salt was so valued that it was given to Roman soldiers as part of their pay, which is where we get the word salary from the salt given. But I was reading a commentator who's a, a Messianic Jew talking about writing about this particular passage. And he said that the thing that seemed the most persuasive to him was the salt and the idea of salt losing its flavor was a call to understand salt as our faith, as our faithfulness. Which does season the world that we live in. Which does help preserve the gospel, preserve the faith that is in us. But that we can lose or that salt becomes less, meaning our faith can weaken. It can be diluted by other things. Now, we, we know that salt doesn't really lose its saltiness. But in the Middle East, as they dig it up, it can be diluted with all sorts of other minerals, making it the saltiness diminished, making it less. And Jesus is using this image of saying, what happens to our own faith? when it begins to be diluted by all sorts of other things in our lives. But remember, it's y'all are the salt of the earth. Y'all together form a faithfulness as a church that manifests God we're, we're living in the Sundays after Epiphany. Epiphany means to manifest, to reveal. And in being a light, we reveal who God is. 
in being salt, in maintaining our faith. We reveal who our God is, who we claim to be, the one we follow. That we maintain a purity of heart. As Jesus mentions in the Beatitudes that we heard last week. Today and two more Sundays will remain in the Sermon on the Mount. Some of us think the Beatitudes is the Sermon on the Mount. But that's the first part of three verses. 24 different teachings. 111 verses. All talking about how we are to live as disciples. How we are to live in community. How we can be faithful. How we can be light and salt in the world. This call to purpose is telling us, one, we are not light for ourselves. We do not just hold a candle for ourselves. But that light goes beyond ourselves and together it goes beyond the few people we're with. And as we carry out our ministry and our faith in the world, we are to continue to shine that light to reveal who God is in the world. To not let that light go out. To not let the faith, the salt of our faithfulness, be diluted by other things that can lower the quality Jesus is calling those disciples and to the church for to perseverance, to preserve, to endure, to carry on, to be faithful. That we as a church are called to let the light of the faith in this congregation shine, not in this nave like Christmas Eve, but out in the world as we go about doing what God calls us to do, as we go about seeking to be models of faith and love and acceptance. Not embracing hatred or prejudice or greed, but faith. So what does that look like? Well, Isaiah gives us a nice, a good beginning definition of that. Loose the bonds of injustice. Undo the thongs of the yoke. Let the oppressed go free. Break every yoke. Share your bread with the hungry. Bring the homeless poor into your house. See the naked and cover them. Do not hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light will shine, will rise in the darkness and your gloom will be like the noonday. The light that we shed is the revealing, the epiphany, the manifestation of God's grace and love and compassion. How God shows no partiality. How God seeks to forgive and call people in. That when we as a church do those things, we are letting the light of our faith, the light of God's presence shine. So that people can say when they see the church, I see God there. I know who God is as I watch them live their life, both as individual unique souls and as a congregation, a community of faith. We, Jesus says, are the light of the world. We are called to reveal, to manifest the glory of God, the presence of God, the grace of God in the world we live in. That's part of what our outreach ministries are about. With each one, we bring the light of Christ to those in need and we show the world what the compassion and grace and generosity of God is. Not our grace or our generosity, but we reveal what God calls us to do. We reveal who God is. 
the abundance of God's love. This is what we reveal as we do the things we are called to. As we remain faithful to the mission and ministries Christ has given to us, we reveal the light of God's presence and God's very nature. So Jesus today looks at you all and says, y'all are the light of the world. Y'all are the salt of the earth. Don't put your light under a bushel. And do not dilute your salt, your faith, with things that distract or remove the presence of God in your actions. Let us persevere. Let us be the salt of the earth. Let us be the light of the world. Let us reveal, let us be an epiphany of Christ's presence. And in doing so, that light of Christ will burn brighter in our own soul. Amen. Let us join with Christians throughout all the ages in a statement of our faith, the Nicene Creed. It's found on page 358 in your Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the The Father, Father, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of of heaven and earth, of all that that is seen and unseen. unseen. We We believe believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Christ, the the only only Son of God. God. Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the prayers of the people, we will use Form 6, found in your bulletin, or on page 392 of your Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. For the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea. For the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. James Taylor, St. Joan of Arc, Pflugerville, St. John's, Austin. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, for the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Archbishop Justin, for our presiding Bishop Michael, for our bishops Andrew, Jeff, Kay, Hector, and Scott, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. 
for all who serve God and His church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, praying together for those on our parish prayer list, Annie, Bill, Bonnie, Carol, Jaron, Donna, Joseph, Oliver, and Wayman. We invite your intercessions and thanksgivings at this time, either silently, out loud, or in the comments. Pray for peace throughout the world, particularly in our own country. Pray for those serving in the armed forces and their families. Pray for the victims of natural and man-made disasters, particularly this past cold, and for our first responders. Pray for our parish and her faithfulness to the mission and ministries Christ has entrusted to us. Pray for the children of the world who suffer. Pray for those who are alone and have no one to pray for them. Hear us, o, hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. For this parish, the return of Deacon John, for all the people in the parish. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Eunice. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy, Have mercy upon Lord, us, most, most merciful, merciful Father. Father. In your, your compassion, forgive, forgive us for our sins, sins known, known and unknown. unknown. Things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Welcome, everyone. Happy Sunday and happy Scout Sunday. It's wonderful to see so many families, so many children and young adults serving and learning together. It's wonderful. Today, you might have noticed we have someone beloved who is back with us. If we can give thanks to God for Deacon John. Welcome back. By your baptism, you are welcome to receive communion today. If you're new, there are visitor's cards in the pew right in front of you. Or if you prefer, there's a QR code on the back of your bulletin. We would love it if you could fill that information out. We really value welcome and community, and we'd like to get to know you a little better. Also, really good news. Bishop Andy Doyle will be here next Sunday for a confirmation and reception of beautiful souls into the Episcopal Church. So this is something that is wonderful to have our bishop here. 
So I hope you can join us next week at the 10 o'clock service. And our very own Elisa Stebbing, my wonderful colleague, but you guys know her very well. She is being ordained on Saturday, February 11 at 2 p.m. at St. Paul Episcopal or San Pablo Episcopal Church in Houston. So if you'd like to, it would be wonderful if you could join in that celebration. Ordinations, I'm biased, but they're very beautiful. So it would be wonderful if you could be there. Also, Super Bowl gumbo next week, Sunday, February 12th. Regular gumbo is 10 bucks. Shrimbo, go, shrimp gumbo, not shrimbo. Shrimp gumbo is $15. Sign up sheet is in the narthex. Um, they, we will not be having a second Sunday brunch because gumbo. Um, also, the 50 plus years wedding anniversary celebration is coming up soon on February 19th. Um, please RSVP to Liz Linger by tomorrow, February 6, if you plan to be there. It'll be a light lunch, dessert, and a great celebration. Our Mardi Gras parade, our, our Shrove Tuesday pancake supper are also fast approaching. That will be on February 21st. There will be a dinner of pancakes, and a king and queen will be crowned, and then the parade begins. So check your bulletin for more information. TEDS, or our Trinity Episcopal Day School, will be opening their fall enrollment February 13th, but parishioners will have access to priority early enrollment tomorrow. Mon that in mind, if you're thinking of loved ones that are little in your life, it's a wonderful place to have them grow in faith and in wonder. And we have ministry in a minute today. I believe Grace will be speaking. We're talking about scouts, perhaps. Oh, hi. <laughs> Welcome, Grace. Good morning, everyone. My name is Grace Kodalik. I'm the senior patrol leader for Trinity's newest Scouts BSA unit, Girls Troop 1777. In my family, I'm the youngest of five kids. My four older brothers are Eagle Scouts, and so is my dad. Two of my brothers are members of Troop 777. I have many memories of riding along to take my brothers to scout camp when I was a toddler. I watched them set up camp. My parents would take me to watch the closing ceremonies. Sometimes we were able to visit for dinner at the camp. My brothers would come home and tell stories about all their adventures, when my brothers and some of their friends became Eagle Scouts, I attended their Eagle Court of Honors and watched the presentations. In many ways, I became the little sister to the Scouts in the troop. Over the years, the boys would try to find ways to include me. Five years ago, BSA announced that girls could join Cub Scouts. I was so excited, I became one of the first girls to ever register in our council. I started as a lone scout because the idea of family scouting was so new, and packs were still being formed. I worked through each of the Cub Scout ranks, Bobcat, Tiger, Wolf, Bear, and Weeblo. I dreamed of the day that I would bridge to a girls' troop and begin my journey to Eagle. On September 9, 2022, I became a founding member of Trinity's Troop 1777 with one of my best friends, Jayla. Her older brother is also an Eagle Scout in Troop 777. We haven't wasted any time beginning our own adventures in the Scouts Be Safe program because we want to have a strong foundation for our troop. We have been developing our scout and leadership skills, and in 2023, our goal is to recruit and grow our troop through fun activities so that more girls can experience this adventure <coughs> with us. We are grateful for the support we have received. Everything about the Four Trinities program just feels like family. Members of Troop 1777, PAC 777, Troop 777, and Crew 112 all support each other. We share resources so that we can become stronger leaders who are capable of serving our community. Thank you for welcoming us here today. Now we have uh, religious awards for at least four Girl Scouts. Are they here or four Scouts? Uh, we've got Jenny or Virginia, Melania. Oh, hey, here you are. <laughs> Giada and Molly. Molly, there she is. Yay. <laughs> 
Come on down. Look at that. I love the vests. Whoa, that's a lot of patches. Are you working on those patches? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's great. Well, let's, these scouts have completed the requirements of say, why don't you all stand on this side and I'll stand over here. Because the po people at home can see you better from there. Yeah, so we've got to let them see you too. <laughs> So these scouts have completed the requirements of study and service for the religious award in their prospective programs. And they have earned the right and privilege of wearing these pins in recognition of this accomplishment. So, Molly, here's your pin. All right. Yes. And you can pin it on if you'd like to. Jenny, Virginia, that's yours. Melania, you want to wait and let your mom help you? Yeah, that's fine. That's a great idea. And Giada. All right. There we go. Yeah, do you want to pin it on? Okay, moms, come on, moms. <laughs> Help me out. I always thought moms did that. I remember that. Was <laughs> they are awesome. Yes, they are girls. Moms are girls. That's true. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. That looks good. All right. Awesome. Thank you, moms. <laughs> All right. As you wear these emblems, may you experience joy and blessings as you grow in God's gut love. So now let us pray. Oh, God, your will is that all your children should grow into fullness of life. We lift to you the ministry of scouting. We offer you thanks for camping to teach us that the world is our great home for study and work to build character for service, to see our responsibility to those in need, for encouragement in genuine neighborliness and vital faith. Bless the work of these scouts and those around the world that they may, like our Lord, increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with you and all people. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 All right. Y'all can go back. <laughs> or anniversaries this week? If so, please come up. Oh, great. Hello, do you have a birthday? When was your birthday? Wonderful. Okay, the 25th, and when was... Oh, your birthday was yesterday. That's wonderful. And is it a... Anniversary. May I ask how many years? 42 years. Praise God. <laughs> Let us pray, saints. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> Brothers, sisters, walk in love as Christ himself loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of heaven. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit to the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Receive, O oh Lord, these gifts presented by your people for the work of your church. Amen. We celebrate this Holy Eucharist to the glory of God and in thanksgiving for the life and witness of Eunice Carolyn Lance, mother of Scott Lance. May her soul and the souls of all the departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace and may light perpetual shine upon them. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at that last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking Come 
union of the body of Christ. The disciples knew the Lord Jesus in the breaking of the bread. One body are we. Jesus in the breaking 
Let us join Our together in the act of spiritual communion. Let us pray. Almighty God, in union with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. As Jesus Christ has taught us, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. Since we cannot receive the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, we beseech you, O God, to bind us together through your Spirit. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, that we may become one body and one Spirit. May we live in you and you in us, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. In the hearts of those who make the journey with us, so be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Hallelujah!